Hey guys, what's up? Cynthia Calderon here with CynthiaFitOnKeto.com. I'm coming to you today to talk to you about how to get started with keto. That is the number one question most of my friends and family ask, and I wanted to share it with you today, so let's get started. All right, guys, so for those of you that don't know me, my name's Cynthia Calderon. I am a mom of four. I'm married to my BFF Gabriel for the last 11 and a half years. Um, and we started our fitness journey about five years ago. And I um, got my love and passion for fitness when I started doing home workout programs. Um, then I became a fitness instructor and it motivated me and inspired me to want to help others just like me. So here I am today um, trying to do my best to help you get started and just share my journey with you and where I'm at so far and enjoying uh, my life. So hopefully what I have to share will resonate with you. If so, uh, please feel free to drop some comments below. Let me know um, what I could help you with, um, if I've um, helped you or given you any value at all. Um, and don't hesitate to um, reach out to me and ask me any questions that you may have. So let's get started. First, of, first and foremost, I am not a specialist, scientist, nutritionist, anything like that. I'm just sharing with you my journey and how I got into this whole keto mess, <laughs> which I love, by the way. So, um, like I said, I became um, a, a, in love with uh, health and fitness about five and a half years ago, almost six years ago. My son, um, who's six um, years old now, was six months at the time when I started to try to work on my health and fitness. Um, I was fed up, sick and tired of being sick and tired, um, started following home workout programs, started eating clean, six, meals, six small meals a day, and working out six days a week. Then, um, just two years ago, I became a certified group fitness instructor um, in two formats, and that's what I do now along with a full-time job. And um the last couple uh, the last year and a half i want to say almost two years um i was struggling with my weight fluctuating up up and down up and down and it didn't matter um how much i ate or how much i worked out or how much i reduced my calories or um, try to lift weight nothing was helping me um you know break that plateau and it was making me feel icky and um i was losing my self-confidence i was mad um i had good days i had bad days and i just knew something was wrong so i started looking into um, my nutrition i was like it has to be with my nutrition because they say you can't out train a bad diet and it didn't matter what i was doing i just felt like man it's, it has to be my diet so i started looking into um different diets and i came across um keto and then intermittent fasting and foods started learning about how foods cause inflammation and um a friend called me up and was like hey dude you've got to check out these, these drinks that I'm taking. They're freaking amazing. They're therapeutic exogenous ketones. They help put your body into ketosis. Now, had she had told me that before I did my research, I would have been like, what the heck is that? But because I was doing research into um, the keto diet, I knew what ketosis was and I knew what ke ketones were. So I was like, really, you know, send them to me. So she sent them to me and the rest is history. I've been drinking therapeutic exogenous ketones um, since January. Um, I've been doing this for six months, seven months now, and I've been doing it with exogenous ketones. You do not have to start your keto journey with exogenous ketones. It's totally up to you how you wanna start your journey. You can totally get into ketosis by following the ketogenic diet 
and get it nutritionally and naturally. Um, I, however, um, felt that it was going to help me jumpstart my keto journey. It was gonna help keep me on track. I knew if I was drinking something that was gonna help um, give me energy and curb my appetite and my cravings and help me with my mood and just give me all of the benefits of ketosis without having to follow this strict keto diet and waiting because it takes people a certain amount of time to reach nutritional ketosis. So I just felt like, hey, if I can get it from a drink within one hour of drinking, then I'm gonna do that and follow the, the keto diet. So that's what I did. But, the, but what I wanna share with you today uh, you could take the ketones with or without following this journey. So my advice to you when you're going to start out with the keto with keto is to get your mindset right. So anytime that you're entering in a life changing experience, you need to go in with a with a good mindset, with the mindset of intention that you intend to keep doing it long term. It's not a short term thing and understand and know that you're going to face challenges and obstacles and it's OK if you mess up, just get back on to, you know, either the, the next meal or the next day or the next workout. Just don't altogether quit. Uh, most of the time people quit or fail is because they have an all in expectation. You expect to go all in and, and be perfect and we're just not. So go in with a mindset of this is a lifestyle change. I'm trying to switch from a sugar burner to a fat burner and I'm going to I'm going to mess up and it's going to be OK because I'm going to keep pushing forward. The second tip that I have for you is do research. Know what the keto diet is. Know um, that it's going to be a different experience for you compared to others. There's different ways to do the keto diet and the way that it pertains to you is gonna to be totally different from the way it pertain, per, pertains to others. So um, do your research. Uh, use Google, go on Google, um, get you some nice books, uh, go to some um, uh, ketogenic.com is a place to go, dietdoctor.com. Um, the Ketogenic Bible is a book that you can purchase as well as um, Keto Clarity by Jimmy Moore. Those are some of the references or resources that I could direct you to. But know, know what keto is and do the research yourself so that you have an understanding of exactly what you're getting yourself into. So that is um, my two top tips for how to get started with keto, okay? Um, and if you don't know what keto is, it's basically switching from burning carbs um, and using sugar for fuel to using fat for fuel. And there's a whole scientific um, explanation for it and I'm not going to get into that when you do your research they do a great job of explaining it to you and um, I just want to tell you like how to get started like what what do you eat so start by knowing your macros so I actually have another video that explains how to calculate your macros for weight loss and to use the carb manager app um, there's different apps out there. You can use a chronometer, I think there is, and MyFitnessPal, and there's some other ones depending if you have an iPhone or an Android. Um, so you could use any app to track your macros, and there's numerous calculators out there. Uh, there's one by Ruled Me. There's other ones. Um, um, Tasteaholics has one. The one that I use is from the KetoBuddy.com. And um, in that video, I explained to you exactly how to go through and put in all of your metrics and then enter it into Carb Manager. I'll put the link down below so you can check it out later. Okay, um, and so that's just, I, as a beginner, you don't have to start tracking your macros because the most important thing is just getting your carb intake. Um, and your carb intake is, um, the most you can have is 20 net carbs give or take like i said it's different from for everybody that's why i want you to calculate your macros before you get started so you kind of know where your carb threshold is 
so you know like hey i can't go over this many net carbs so when you're first starting out you want to be able to track your um, carbs first and then you can worry about your protein and your fat because when you're following keto it's a high fat moderate protein very low carbs so just tracking your carbs is going to be easy enough saying hey you know what i need to stay away from carbs and you know less carbs the better like maybe limiting one of your meals with carbs as you start off or you could start cold turkey and just say hey you know what i'm not having no carbs i'm tracking i'm gonna stay under my 20 net grams and that is it that's how i started i'm just a cold turkey kind of gal and that's what i do i just I mean, I just stop things cold turkey and I go for it. So totally up to you how you want to start, but I suggest sticking with just counting your, um, Ooh, my camera's moving. Just sticking with your, um, uh, calculate or tracking your carbs, your net carbs. So the way you figure out your net carbs is your total carbohydrates that's on your label. So you're going to want to learn how to read a nutritional label. You're going to look at the total carbohydrates minus the fiber and that's going to be your 20 net grams or that's your net carbs i should say not grams net carbs so if a box of macaroni is 46 grams of carbs and it has 10 grams of fiber you're going to subtract the 46 from the 10 which is 36 grams and that's 36 grams net carbs so clearly you're over your carb intake so no macaroni for you okay um, so make sure that you're staying under that 20 gram uh, threshold when it comes to your carbs and then you know start start thinking about switching your fat intake to about the same amount of intake that you do right now currently as a sugar burner like how much carbs you have like think about how much carbs you have all day bread pasta rice cereal things like that you need to switch that and that's how much fat you should be eating which is different for everybody so um eat until you're full and then don't eat until you're hungry because when following keto you because of the high fat intake which is like avocado oil avocados coconut oil mct oil um, and some nuts you are um, going to feel fuller longer and that's you're going to be more satiated so you're not going to be as hungry which sometimes just kind of allows you to do intermittent fasting on your own naturally um, it's not something that you're trying to do but it just happens because you're not as hungry as you were when you were eating carbs and burning sugar for fuel because sugar once it's done it's done and you need to eat more so that's why you're constantly eating as a sugar burner but as a fat burner you're more satiated and full and your body is using that fat for fuel and once it runs out it starts using the fat on your body as fuel so you're not really as hungry and you know and you no longer have glucose available for it to burn so it's burning on fat plus a lot of you guys don't know but when you're eating your protein and your vegetables, your body knows what to do. And if it needs any type of glucose, it's gonna pull it from your protein and your vegetables. But hey, like I said, I'm not a nutritionist or a scientist. This is just the research that I've done. So you wanna eat things like fatty cuts of meat, like steaks, ribeye, chicken thighs, chicken legs, before you were eating like uh, chicken breast and grilled chicken breast you don't want to do that anymore you want to go for the darker meat on the chicken with the skin on and then chicken thighs you want to have um, ground beef the 80 20 um, and of course you want to stick to the non-processed food so you're still eating clean it's just you're sticking with a moderate amount of protein and a um, and vegetables and high fat so your vegetables are gonna be like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, um, kale, asparagus, things like that. And then um, your fats are like butter, bulletproof coffee, MCT oil, um, coconut oil, um, what else, eggs, things like that. And then 
you want to have some snacks or some go-tos because hey you're going from eating all day to not eating as much but you still have these like habits and you're and you're used to eating by the clock. You're used to saying, oh my God, it's snack time. Oh my God, it's lunch time. Oh my God, it's snack time. And it's not like that anymore. So you've created a, a, a habit and it's gonna get some, it's gonna take some time to get used to. So if you have a craving for a snack, I would suggest drink a glass of water before, make sure you know you're really hungry. And if you still want something to eat after you've drank a glass of water, Go for something like almonds or macadamia nuts or um, walnuts. You could do string cheese, beef jerky, um, pork rinds, things like that that you can snack on that are keto friendly. So, um, oh, hard boiled eggs or deviled eggs. Ooh, that's my favorite to snack on. So. Those are some things that you want to um, have available for you, especially if you're like a snacker. The other thing that I have to tell you is to be prepared. Um, just because those cravings or those cravings that you used to have as a sugar burner, like I said, are like a habit. So just be prepared and have those snacks available with you um, at work or when you're on the go or going on vacation or taking the kids to their um, games or activities or what have you. So um, some easy, easy things to go to at home are like eggs, bacon, cheese, coffee, um, just have those ready to go at the house because I, I can tell you right now, we have come home from like a long day of being out with the kids and we're hungry. So we just come home and we have breakfast for dinner. So we have bacon and eggs and avocado for dinner and it's, it's delicious. Why not? Um, have takeout options. So you can go, you can just eat keto just about anywhere. Um, the only thing is that you'll have to be worried about is like how they, what they make their food with. What you, I mean, it's better to go bunless at a burger joint than having the bun. You know, what they put in their, in their sauce and stuff, we don't know. So just kind of keep it simple, you know, bun bunless cheeseburger and eat it on top of the lettuce. You don't need the bun or order a side salad and the bunless burger and put that burger on top of the salad. It's delicious and add some ranch dressing and you're good. Just look at the ranch dressing, make sure there's, you know, um, no sugar in there and the carbs are okay. Um, what else? When you're going out to eat at a restaurant, don't be afraid to ask them if they can supplement the rice and beans for some steamed vegetables or if they can just not bring the um, chips and salsa. How about that? So don't be afraid to ask your um, waiter or waitress to change things for you or if they can, you're paying for it anyway, so might as well get what you pay for. And um, just, uh, you know, don't opt for cheating. I mean, you can't just say, well, this will be my cheat meal. I recommend that you don't cheat at all when you're first starting out with keto. I know it's gonna be really hard not to because like I've said a hundred times already, <laughs> you're switching from a sugar burner to a fat burner and you don't wanna mess that up, you know? So. Just don't cheat until you are comfortable with what, what you're doing, you know your macros, and that comes a little bit later. So as you're getting started, just say no to cheat days. If you are an alcohol drinker, um, you can stick to low carb beers or most of the liquor. Um, but I will warn you that when you switch from uh, the standard American diet, which is the sugar burner, to a keto fat burner, you are going to get drunk faster. So be aware and be mindful that you have no longer having carbs, so nothing's in there to soak up that alcohol and it's going to enter your blood more quickly. So drink your drink, followed by a glass of water or a bottle of water, and then drink again. So just be careful, be mindful, don't get all crazy and you know, ridiculous. <laughs> the last thing that I have for you is electrolytes. 
you have to absolutely keep replenishing your body with electrolytes. So that's like adding salt, pink Himalayan salt, um, sodium, magnesium, and potassium. Those are the number one supplements that you want to keep replenishing your body with throughout your keto journey. Even while you're taking exogenous ketones or not, those are some of the supplements that you want to keep supplementing your body with because with keto, it's constantly flushing out those minerals that you absolutely need. Most of Americans are already deficient in potassium and magnesium, so go ahead and just go grab you a bottle from your local vitamin store or order them on Amazon and keep and just take them every night. Magnesium will help you sleep better um, if you take it in the evening before you go to bed and just keep drinking plenty and plenty and plenty of water. So I hope this video helped you out. I hope that you got some valuable information from it. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. Share with your friends and your family. I wish you the best of luck on your keto journey. This is part one of four videos. I'm gonna come back tomorrow and talk to you about what to expect when following keto because there's so much that goes on when you start switching from sugar burner to a fat burner. All right, so thank you so much. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can get um, all of my videos. Hit the little bell so you're notified when part two comes out tomorrow evening. Hope you guys have a great day. Stay blessed. Good night.